Pat Slicer Parrot here. I'm here to interview Pat Compton. Um, so thank you very much for your, Pat, uh, your time today, Pat. Um, we're here to record the oral history of Pat's career through um, local government. So Pat, can you um, tell us how you got into local government? Thanks, Lisa. I commenced work uh, at the Bar Court and Shire Council on the 30th of November, 59, after doing my junior at the um, Bar Court and State High School. I had planned to leave school earlier when I did scholarship, that was a grade eight year, and I had secured a job as a uh, apprentice electrician. But a family friend talked me into uh, going back and doing my junior, which I did. And at that stage in Bar Coulton, you, uh, there weren't many jobs available. You took what you could get. And uh, I had anticipated I would uh, do some sort of trade uh, so I did an industrial course for junior, which turned out to be absolutely of no benefit to me whatsoever, but you learn. And I was lucky enough to um, get a job in the uh, council as a, a junior clerk. So that's where my, my um, life in, in local government began. Um, the Shire clerk at the time was a chap by the name of uh, Jack King and um, he had just come to Bar Corden from Capella. And I was lucky enough to have Jack there because he was a very good tutor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can remember the first day I started, there was a, a, a lady in the office, a spinster she was, Miss Fish. And uh, Miss Fish uh, was doing a sort of accounting work, I suppose you'd call it. And the council at that stage uh, had the electricity authority. They looked after the uh, generation of electricity. And Miss Fish had uh, prepared all these sheets of figures for electricity and she had added them up in her head. And of course, they didn't balance. So my first job there was to go through with the one adding machine that the council had and prepare go through, add up these columns and columns of figures and correct them. So I always remember this first. Wow, that's, um, and now we just pull out the old Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, at that stage, all they had in the office, was, apart from typewriters, was one uh, um, adding machine. Wow. An electric adding machine. Yeah. Uh, first task, so I did. Uh, entering daily receipts into the ledgers. Then I went on to cashier. Then electricity meter reader, uh, accounting task, preparing notices, rate notices by hand. Uh, but as I said, Jack King saw that I was trained in all aspects of uh, local government. And in time, I was given responsibility for issuing rate notices, doing the cash books and general ledger, etc. Uh, I suppose uh, Jack persuaded me to uh, do some studies and uh, I did the um, accounting, local government accounting, in 1964 while I was in Barcaulden. I was planning to uh, get my local government clerk certificate because that's what you have to do in those days to um, uh, practice in local government. Uh, I started to look around at the wider world and uh, put in for a few jobs here and there and finally I got a job at uh, Pioneer Shire in Mackay and that was in 1965. So I came up here then. Uh, first year was pretty hopeless because I was uh, in a boarding house with a lot of other young fellows. <laughs> we played up merry hell, so I didn't do any study <laughs> the first year. <laughs> so I got back into it the next year and in 66 I passed the law. Yep. So I got my local government clerk's certificate then. And because the council at Pioneer, didn't have a deputy shire clerk then. They had a chap there who wasn't qualified, but um, when I got my ticket, they appointed me as deputy shire clerk, so things, I was on the way at that stage. Wow, yeah. You could always say that 1965 was your gap year. Gap year, I had a gap year. <laughs> Everyone's got to have a gap year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was interested mainly in, in accounting. I, I liked accounting, because I could see at the end of the day, you, you either balanced or you didn't, and if you didn't, then you went and found it, which mm -hmm. I, I quite enjoyed. So uh, I studied and did the um, auditor's 
the exam, local government orders in uh, 68. And um, uh, the shy clerk at, at Pioneer, Ernie Evans, his father, the previous uh, Ernie Evans, was the Minister for Mines and Main Roads at one stage. And um, Ernie became very ill in uh, the late 70s and then early 80s. And I was acting quite a long time as uh, the uh, Shire Clerk. And so long, in fact, that some colleagues felt I should join Actors' Equity. But uh, Ernie finally resigned in um, early 81 and I was appointed the uh, Shire Clerk at that stage. Then in the early 90s, the Queensland Government commissioned a review into uh, local government boundaries, mm. which eventually saw um, Pioneer Shire and Mackay City amalgamated. That would have been about 95? No, that was in 94. 94. Um, and following the amalgamation, I was appointed the CEO to the new Mackay City Council and worked in that position up until uh, November 98. Okay. The um, review of the boundaries, it took quite a long time to achieve anything and um, it probably destroyed a lot of relationships in that time because uh, we had a very good relationship between the uh, town clerk, Stan Fersman, and his deputy, Mark Lalan. And over the course of time, you were sort of fighting for your council and uh, it wasn't a, uh, a pleasant time at all. Yeah. So, anyway, we all got through it. <laughs> Yes, well, we had the reforms in 2008 yeah, yeah. as well, which I was yeah, part of the... Mm. Yeah, and then mm. uh, I was part of Ipswich and Morton in 94, yeah. 95, when we had some boundary alignments and it was a difficult time, so it was across the board by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, so what were your role models throughout your career? Well, when um, I came to Pioneer, Ernie Evans was a a strong supporter of the Institute of Municipal Administration and he saw that I uh, uh, attended conferences in the, the North Queensland branch. Uh, we used to have half yearly conferences. I don't know whether they still have them half yearly but um, we certainly did at those stage and they were probably a, a four day affair. They go Friday and Monday. Oh, oh good. But um, it was here I met uh, the likes of Arthur Forno from uh, Mulgrave Shire, uh, Jack Pender from Hinchinbrook Shire, um, Billy Mills from Atherton, Doug Fairbank from uh, Dalrymple Shire and Jack May from Eacham. Now these people uh, extended to me that I felt true friendship and fellowship and um, showed me what it took to be a uh, true local government professional. So I suppose I would say that these were my role models and I had quite a lot to do with them. Now those um, get-togethers, I, I truly appreciate them as well with local government professionals and getting together, <laughs> off the record and on the record. <laughs> yeah. oh, it wasn't all, all work and no play, we, we uh, had uh, great times there, uh, particularly in the North Queensland grants. Yeah. Um, so what changes have you observed um, in time over your career? Well, when I first started off, there was the basics, the roads, rubbish, water, health. But in time, uh, town planning, community development, arts came to the fore. And probably uh, town planning is now probably the one thing that occupies most of the council's time. The early days, um, councillors met once a month. Mm -hmm. They were part time and they were paid very little recompense for their time and effort. Now the councillors, of course, are full time. But, um, in some ways, I don't really know how they occupy their time in a full time role. So they haven't got set, set things to do. Um, in the past, Working in local government was, in the majority of cases, a lifetime career. Once you join local government, you stay till you, you retire. You joined at an early age, worked your way up the ladder. But this appears to have changed. Mm. Um, in the political sphere, I 
really seen the weakening of the local government portfolio in the Queensland government. But um, ministers from the local government back in the 70s and 80s, they were strong personalities, and their portfolio reflected portfolio reflected that. Uh, I had difficulty to find out who the uh, minister of local government was. I googled it, and it's Mark Ferner. Mm -hmm. And when he on the list of uh, of the portfolio, his name appears last in the 17 ministries. I don't know how that was arranged. And uh, although he and Jackie Trad uh, share one department, infrastructure planning and, and development, and I can tell it. Okay, for tell the story. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Uh, the um, boundaries between uh, Pioneer and Mackay were always a very sensitive issue. And the uh, Pioneer Shire had approved a subdivision at Paget, which was the start of the Paget industrial estate, but that was in Pioneer, and oh, it was right. the other side of the city. The, the Pioneer Shire surrounded the city of Mackay. And okay, yep. um, the subdivision was approved, and we had an agreement with the city council um, that all sewage effluent was treated at Mount Bassett uh, treatment plant. And the council assumed that uh, this industrial state in South Mackay would the sewage would travel north. The uh, city didn't approve that, and uh, that forced a, a boundary issue just to bring that in. But the first uh, real industry to go there was um, a milk factory, which has huge volumes of, of discharge, and uh, they couldn't discharge it into the sewage system, so it had to be pumped out and carted away. So the council was picking up the, uh, the bill for that. So we tried to um, speak to the Minister for um, Primary Industries. He refused to see us, so we went to see our minister, which was Russ Sims. Anyway, Russ, we went in to see Russ, he agreed to see us, and here he is, sitting there, a pair of pants and a singlet. And he said, what's your problem? And we told him. And he said, it's not my, not my concern. Well, we said, the um, primary industries minister who refused to see us. And he said to his sidekick, he said, is the minister in the house? He said, yes. He said, go and get him. So he went out, brought the minister back, and said, uh, these people have got a problem. Uh, it's your problem, fix it. They're not paying for the discharge of the influence, the effluent. So away he went. Well, he wasn't very happy, <laughs> the minister. But that's sort of... Uh, mm, strong leadership, had, yeah. strong and involved and protecting yeah, local government. Right, yeah. mm. On the ground, hands on. Hands on. That'd be lovely. <laughs> 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 and um, probably just um, touching on um, something we spoke about before um, we started the interview, just the greatest improvement to lead on to what changes you've observed over time. Has there been any improvements that you can see in your career in local government? Um, as far as um, local government itself mm. or, or uh, you know, for the workers? Or um, probably both, if you can respond to both. Um, it's, uh, it's become more professional, uh, local government. One, one time, of course, you really didn't worry about, about efficiencies, things like that. You just went out and did the, did the job, whatever, whatever it cost, and charged the ratepayers accordingly. Yep. Uh, now, uh, the local government is more cost conscious, and, uh, but I still think you can't run it like a business because uh, you're providing a service to people. So some things are going to run into loss no matter what you what yeah. you do and I think you've got to accept that. Um, for for staff, I've, in my own opinion, I think the worst thing that uh, brought in with staff was uh, enterprise bargaining. I know it was to um, obtain efficiencies but once you do your first round of enterprise bargaining there's really nothing left to, to do with you. And each time it comes up, you're really scratching for for efficiencies to be made. And it, it appears that uh, the worker is the one who's who's giving it up all the time. 
So it was much easier when you had an award and you paid the people that. The only trouble with that, you couldn't reward those people who were better than what the award yeah, uh, kind of above and beyond. provided. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, can you share any highlights? Oh, yeah. I suppose reaching my goal of becoming a Shire Clerk mm -hmm. in 81 and then being appointed CEO to the Amalgamated Council. Whilst I was with Pioneer Shire, one of the most involved and exciting projects which I had to deal with was the Aqua Del Rey Laguna Keys development in the northern part of the Shire at Mitch Point. That was a um, integrated resort development and the developers were Japanese and they had many, many discussions with them. They were, they were tough to, uh, to deal with, but uh, considered fair. Uh, and it was you know, personal satisfaction for me that in, uh, I think it was early 2000 that the resort was open. Unfortunately, it's fallen on hard times and uh, mm. it's not going to present time. The other highlight was I did the um, local government elections of the Gale Coast in 2000. Are you the returning officer That's for that? returning officer, yeah. yes. Yeah, I finished work by that stage and um, I was invited to make a submission by Dale uh, Dixon because uh, Dale was, had known me. He was the Shire Clerk at uh, um, Prosperine previously. He went from Prosperine to Gale Coast. I did not know that. And, um, yeah. There you go. Uh, so he asked me to um, put in a submission and I was given the job. Um, the council provided me with, a, with an office and staff and all I had to do was uh, run the election. Uh, I didn't realise just how big it was. There was 239,000 voters on the roll. They had 14 divisions, uh, which they were all contested. And um, one in one particular division, one of the candidates lost by uh, 20 votes. There was, I think, 14,000 in that. Uh, he challenged it in the Supreme Court. So uh, I had to front up to the Supreme Court. Eventually, um, the um, elected candidate was uh, declared elected. It was a valid election, but the, the judge made different rulings on a few votes. Okay. He, he, he uh, saw them differently to the way I saw them, but that didn't matter. So uh, it uh, vindicated what uh, I had done previously anyway. Yeah, but, so how many yeah. preference votes did you go down to uh, to work out the, the winner? Well, in his particular case, there were only two oh, standing. So it's so a little bit easier. There, were, there was, yeah, first past the post in yeah. that one, yeah. yeah. Uh, but the others, uh, the, some of them went with, uh, you know, I I never dealt with um, preference voting, preferential voting before, but lucky enough I had these people working for me who would work for state elections, federal elections, they were all conversant with it. Mm. So I just left it to them to do. It's definitely an experience. <laughs> I've is. done a few yeah, yeah. counting. Um, mm. it's a very interesting experience yeah. and being part of it. It's yeah. amazing yeah. part of the election and democratic process. process. Yeah. yeah. So the, what the, there was one uh, lass who um, stood for the mayoralty at that, that stage. Uh, and she turned out she was a topless dancer and stripper. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it got a lot of publicity, yeah. if nothing else. Yeah. Um, so what would be some of the low lights or one of the oh, worst thing about your career? Definitely the, the amalgamation process. Uh, and, and the reason why it, it, it dragged on for so long because each each council was fighting it, you know, the, 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 the for and against, and as I said, uh, the relationships, you know, were, were affected in it. So, uh, and did that trickle down to the staff as well? Oh, yeah. look, it, when when the um, amalgamation finally occurred, we tried to put two lots of uh, people together. Um, the workers, we, we mixed up Pioneer Shire workers and city workers and the blokes out in the road when they'd have smoke, oh, Pioneer Shire people would sit there and city people would sit there. And uh, so we thought after 12 months, 
We thought, well, we don't appear to be winning here, you know, yeah. we've got to get them together. So we put on a, put on a big party, had a barbecue, we had drinks, we got them all together. And it didn't seem to be work, working either, they, they weren't mixing. Yeah. So I said, let's close the whole thing down. And this stage, they all got together and said, why, we're just starting to enjoy ourselves <laughs> and now you're closing the whole thing down. Oh, wow. <laughs> So they finally come around, but it took took a long took a time. long time. So they they banded together to to make sure the party went That's funny. Yeah. Oh, what? Well, <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Um, the uh, and of course, when I was asked to resign, it was uh, low mm-hmm. low time for me. Um, but um, oh, all things things work out. Uh, Brenda was concerned that, um, you know, I'd go to pieces after. Uh, but I'm a person that um, if I can't change things, I don't worry about it. And um, I moved on. She thought uh, what I'd missed most was the um, uh, react interaction with my colleagues. Yeah. Um, I did miss it, but not to the extent she probably thought uh, I would. Mm-hmm. I thought I may continue on um, going to conferences, things like this, but um, I had spoken to Jack Pender when he resigned and uh, I said, you're still going to come to the conference with Jack, of course. He said, uh, no, Pat. He said, when you're out, you're out. And uh, I thought that's a strange attitude, being involved as he was, and um, I came to think the same way. Okay. And uh, whilst I still uh, remain you know, in the um, institute at that stage, and now the um, LGMA, uh, I didn't find any particular reason to go uh, conferencing. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you, as I said, once you're out, you're yeah, out. <laughs> okay. Um, as a CEO, what worked for you? Or you're generally being an officer of local government? Uh, I tried to lead by example and. Uh, not ask someone to do something that I wasn't prepared to do myself. I had regular weeding, uh, weekly meetings with my directors and tried to keep in touch with as many of the other staff as possible. I had a very strong member of my executive team that I could count on for support and he kept me informed of things that um, I may not have been aware of. So I think you need that, you need someone to watch mm-hmm. your back. Uh, I enjoyed the company of my uh, fellow workers and looked forward at the end of the week to go to the social club and have a few drinks. And um, I felt people in that atmosphere were more uh, likely to open up and you learnt a lot more there than mm. probably during the week. Yep. So, um, the other thing was uh, mm. having other people you could talk to, um, the other CEOs in the, that I knew well. Yep. Uh, that's important if you've got a problem that's wrong enough. Yeah. Yeah, good old peer network. Yeah, yeah. 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 can't beat yeah. it. Um, so what did you have to change about yourself or your approach along uh, the way? Has yeah. local government changed as your career progressed? Yeah. I was a pretty hands-on person. I like I liked accounting. Yeah. So, uh, as I say, it either adds up or it doesn't. And uh, at the end of the day, you can see what you've achieved. But when you become a CEO, some days you think, my God, what have I done today? And uh, I had to get over that and say, well, you're not going to achieve everything today or even even weeks. Uh, that was the hardest thing, I think, for me, adjusting to that because you spend so many times in meetings, mm-hmm. um, discussions with counsellors. Um, everyone wanted to make a complaint to the, to the CEO and uh, probably I was a bit... Um, too easy to get to, yep. uh, but I believe if someone had a complaint and they wanted to see you, you see them. Um, I didn't hide away from it. Um, but I did find it a bit difficult to uh, staying at arm's length from certain matters. So I, I wanted to get involved and I found you, you've got to pull back and let people who are paid to do the job do it. What's been or what was the most difficult part of your role or your roles? Um, I think uh, 
dealing with expectations of councillors was one. Uh, I don't think they realised just how uh, difficult it is when you've got you know, a large workforce and because they raised something, they expected it to be done immediately. Um, I think that's... Apart from that, I, I really had no, no problem with local government. It was my life. I enjoyed it. Um, what's the best thing about having a local government career? Oh, the diversity. Uh, you're dealing with so many different aspects. Mm. Um, the other thing I felt was uh, it offered security. Uh, once you were in, unless you did something uh, really bad, uh, you stayed there for the rest of your life. That has changed now, and I, I, I um, think that councils expect people only to stay a short time and then move on. They look for other ideas mm -hmm. coming in. Maybe that's a good thing, maybe not, but uh, it's, it's how it's, it's changed. And that's what I say, there's no longer any security in local government. For top people, there is for um, um, you know, the ordinary worker. I know um, after the amalgamation, after I left, all of the other top people had gone within two years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yet all the other staff remained. Mm -hmm. It was just the top people that uh, went, I either pushed or, uh, or decided that they'd had enough and gone somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what advice would you have to newcomers and prospective LG local government CEOs? Look, I don't have any uh, real advice and to offer, but uh, I would say a couple of things. Uh, treat all councillors equally and um, don't become too close socially. I feel that is... To the councillors? To the councillors, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I adopted that, but it didn't seem to work for me, so what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so from your first day to your last day, um, what are your most clear observations of change and um, how things are run differently? Probably the change is very yeah, interesting. Uh, well, when I started, uh, as I said previously, the council only met once a month. And the Shire clerk at that stage, he ran the council's operations, made all the day-to-day -day decisions, mm -hmm. even though he had no legislative authority. Of course, he'd refer certain things to the council chairman just to cover his back, but essentially he was the one making the decisions. And if something came up, they ratified at a council meeting. And there was a council only met once a month. This is the only way the system could work. Uh, even so, the Shire clerk couldn't make appointments. All appointments were done by the, the council, even to put on a, uh, a junior clerical officer. The council made the decisions. Really? Wow. Yeah. So the, the role is essentially an administrative one and that's why the Institute initially was called the Institute of Municipal Administration. But later on the Act was changed to provide for corporate governance where the council set the policies and strategies and the CEO they made sure that they were carried out. Mm. That is the big change in like in my government as I see it. And of course the other was the introduction of computers. Mm. Uh, I can remember at Pioneer Shire to do the half yearly rates on an accounting machine we'd take a month or so to prepare all and all the staff put down whatever other duties they were doing and they concentrated on getting the rates out. Now they didn't overnight. Mm. Um, but that's progress, and uh, I, when I was trying to get the uh, computer into uh, the Pioneer Shire, the councillors were saying, well, how many staff are we going to get rid of? How, how? And so I said, you're going to probably put on more, but things will be done more efficiently. Yep. Everything will be up to date, and, uh, and that's how it turned out. We didn't put off anyone, yeah. we put on more, but uh, it's the efficiency it yeah. uh, provided. Yep, and um, being able to allocate to do other things other as things, well. Other yeah, things, well, yeah. So work was put on hold while they did the rates and then they'd get back to them later and you'd be months behind in costing. You didn't know what you were or anything. So. Wow. 
It's amazing how technology has improved the way we do things for the good or the well, bad, well <laughs> whatever they may be. Um, have you got any other parting uh, comments about your experiences about local government, about um, key messages or learnings to upcoming local government professionals? No. Uh, I think uh, the people coming into local government uh, these days are much more qualified than, than we ever were. Um, you know, people coming with multiple degrees these days and all they really mm. need is the experience then. But, um, uh, no, no further. No great words of wisdom. No, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Pat. I do appreciate it. It's fantastic yeah. to talk to you actually and hear about some of the your career and your journey. Um, so thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Liz.